Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Going to do a little experiment today. Got this comment from John P. Says, have you ever tried adding a slow flanger before the reverb insert? Tip from Bob Clear Mountain. Well, I like Bob Clear Mountain, so let's check it out. Here is the session that I was using for that video about reverb where this comment came from. And uh, here's the sound that I have so far on the vocal with a nice kind of big reverb on it. As long as I can remember, I was never afraid of the dark. So the idea here is let's put a flanger before that reverb plugin over here in the effects chain. If you're not familiar with the flanger, here's what it sounds like just on the entire mix. As long as I can remember, I was never afraid of the dark. So it gives you that sort of a sound. Different from a phaser, but in the same kind of ballpark category. So the idea he's saying is to put this in front of the reverb. My guess is it adds some like left to right cool modulation stuff that might make the reverb sound wider, perhaps. So let's drag this over. I'm going to hold down Option and move this in front of the reverb. So let's just listen to the reverb itself and see what it did. As long as I Pretty subtle. That's the only problem I have with it is here it is without the flanger. As long as I and here it is with the flanger. As long as I so then that's actually, I, that's kind of cool. Might be a little too much. So what if we pulled it back a little bit? So it feels like the vocal is kind of pulsing, swimming almost. Almost feels like it's in water. And certain frequencies are going up and down, which is basically what's happening. But almost like it's swirling around and it's not staying in one place in the stereo field. All very cool, but I'm concerned if I'll be able to hear it in the mix when I'm having when I hear the, the dry vocal up front and that in the background. Let's hit play and find out. As long as I can remember. I was never afraid of the dark. Okay, and listen again without the flanger. As long as I can remember, I was... Here's the problem that I was afraid was going to happen and almost why I didn't shoot this video, because if it doesn't work, then I'm thinking, oh, what a failure. But actually, it's kind of fun to do these experiments with you. So by itself, when we just listen to the reverb, you can hear that flanger thing. That's kind of cool. But then in the mix, I mean, that was just with just the vocal in the mix. I couldn't really hear it. Add in the guitars too. As long as I can remember, I was... One solution would be to add more reverb, but that's, I mean, that's more reverb than I would want anyway. So adding more just to be able to hear the flanger, now we're getting into the territory of I'm just doing it on principle and not because it's what's best for the song. So one other idea I had is perhaps maybe I could put the flanger after the reverb, see what that sounds like. As long as I can remember, I was never... And maybe set the mix on the flanger to like 50-50. As long as I can remember, I was never afraid of the dark. So you hear it on the tails it, a little more. You can hear it more because it's flanging the reverb sound versus flanging the pre-reverb sound. But even in the mix, I'm not so sure we would hear much of it. As long as I can remember, I was never afraid of the dark. Okay, a couple of takeaway points for you. First, this may just be the wrong application for this on a more ambient song with some cool electric guitar that's drenched in reverb, probably adding that little bit of modulation even before the reverb could add this depth to it that's not there before. So I completely see that on my, my pedal board over there. I've got the, um, the Memory Man delay, and it's got this modulation knob that takes it a little out of tune. It's more of a chorus effect. It's not a flanger, but 
in the modulation category. And I love what it does, the little pitches that change. And then I send that into a reverb that also modulates, and that has some little subtle pitch changes. So it goes a little out of tune, but in a cool way. That's the idea here. But the other takeaway is sometimes you have an idea that sounds really cool on paper, then you try it and you just don't hear it. And you may convince yourself that it's there, but Sometimes you have to just be honest with yourself and say, well, I don't hear that. Yes, I could solo this and show everyone, listen to my cool reverb. But if we're not hearing that in the mix, then who cares? Like, no, literally no one cares what you did that no one hears. They're going to care about what we can hear in the mix. I can't even hear that flanger very well with just the vocal. As long as I can remember, I was... Like... If I tell myself I'm listening for it, I kind of hear it, but then add even one guitar and it's totally lost. So I am not saying this is a bad technique. You should try it. Maybe the, maybe a different flanger would work better, has a different tone, uh, maybe a different reverb setting, maybe a different mix, a different song entirely. I'm not throwing this away. It does kind of trigger ideas for me of, well, maybe a flanger in front of a reverb or in front of a delay might be cool or... Uh, some distortion first and then a flanger or vice versa. Like treat treat my effects sends more like a guitar pedal board. So instead of just a reverb and an EQ, maybe there's a few other elements there to add some different character and life. But the big thing that has to be true there is you have to be able to hear it in the mix. Just because it's doing something by itself, it could be a big waste of time as well. So I was hesitant to show this to you, but I'm glad I did because I think we learned something that we should always be experimenting, always be learning, always be doing these little science experiments, but be willing to say, meh, that didn't work. And that's okay too. It's not like a big failure F on my paper. I just, I tried something and for this scenario today, didn't work very well. And that's what this is all about. Like I said in a previous video, we're just collecting bags of tricks. And then we pull out a trick and we try it on a song and either it works or it doesn't. Either way, that's great. I've got a whole bunch more tricks in my bag, multiple bags. I messed that up. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And if you haven't gotten your free copy of my course called Understanding Production, you can do that for free at homestudiocorner.com slash UP. Thanks for watching. See ya.